Hello and welcome to Show Studio. It is Autumn Winter 19 Couture Week and it is the last day of Couture. Um, this is actually Show Studio's first ever dedicated Victor and Rolf panel, so I'm delighted to be here chairing today. Um, we will dive into that precise question among others, but first I'll let my charming set of panellists introduce themselves. India, let's start with you on the end. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm India. I'm commissioning editor at Canvas 8. Hi, I'm George. I'm a freelance journalist. Hi, I'm Amna. I'm co-founder of uh, independent publication Cause and Effect. Hi, I'm Jason and I'm a stylist. And I'm Lara Johnson-Wheeler. And I'm a freelance writer, editor and broadcaster. Um, so, Victor and Rolf, very exciting, as I mentioned. The first time Show Studio has actually done a dedicated panel on Victor and Rolf. And I think Victor and Rolf are often mentioned in, if you're an avid follower of Show Studio, the Roundup panels. Mm -hmm. They often have shows that seem to kind of pop out at Couture Week, and that's because they are quite a different and in some ways diverse brand. But why do we think that that, that is? Why do we think that Victor and Rolf sometimes perhaps get forgotten among the Couture schedule? I think Victor and Rolf is the fashion person's fashion designers, aren't they? They're not really well known outside of mm. that sphere. Mm. I'm interested in that because I think Victor and Rolf kind of have two sides to them. There's this kind of high-low thing. And whereas you say people maybe you know, don't know them outside of the, of the sphere. I think a lot of what they do, for example, like their fragrances, mm -hmm. you know, Flower Bomb and what the Bon Bon Couture, they're quite well known, but in a mm -hmm. different realm. That's interesting too, because I feel like the H&M collaboration mm. is, is, um, is overlooked completely. Mm -hmm. I think if you talk about H&M collaborations, a lot mm. of brands spring, spring to mind, but I don't think um, Victor and Rolf ever get the same media or same attention but that was in 2006 so mm. it was um before um was it before social media or before the complete um social media obsession i guess also most couture brands have been around for decades haven't mm -hmm. they in victor and rolf what's that 20 years 25 years yeah well, they were founded in 93 um and sort of started showing couture and i think there's this kind of tension between when they were also a ready-to-wear house and they showed on the ready-to-wear schedule, mm -hmm. but then left and now are, you know, really focusing on bridal wear mm -hmm. and couture. But coming back to sort of the initial question, you know, what is, what is that? India, I wonder if you have a hot take on that about um, their place. No. But I think they're, they're kind of interesting because they have played the kind of democratic card with the, like, high street collaborations and mm -hmm. exhibitions and this kind of, like... Um, it's very open on that level, and mm. then I guess they've removed themselves entirely with just by doing couture. So I guess in a way they kind of like straddle both ends of the fashion spectrum, but don't necessarily kind of give that like constant Instagrammable like you know, the regularity that we would expect and, ha and know from other brands. So maybe it's just literally a case of kind of like you know they haven't been as present. And then last season when they did those like very Instagrammable mm. collections, they suddenly like stepped into the social media spotlight in the way that maybe they had been absent from before? Yeah, because I would say for me personally, uh, the brand isn't necessarily one I would check for mm -hmm. until seeing last season. Mm. Last season felt um, a little bit more accessible, a lot younger, mm. a lot more contemporary. And I think something that they do continue throughout with their collections is a sense of kind of quite amusing, you know, mm. it kind of has a playful side to it, yeah. yeah. Um, I think accessibility is something, you know, you brought up that I think is really interesting because even when they did do Ready to Wear, there is always um, couture elements um, in all those clothes. So if people weren't buying it, you know, at the time, or if people weren't accessing it in stores, now I don't know who was carrying Victor and Rolf mm. and um, where you could go and purchase Victor and Rolf. And I think that has something to do with it. So if you don't get to be at the shows, you get to at least go to, um, you know, your favorite shop and actually look at the clothes mm. up close. And that's, you know. That's kind of the distinction with ready to wear, where couture often feels a bit more sure. removed. Mm. Yeah, but the ready to wear collections also felt that way, mm. you know, mm. um, because I don't think they've been off the radar. I think the show that they did with um, turning every look into a work of art, mm. I think that was a really Painting memorable show. show. Autumn of 15? 15, yeah. maybe. 
Um, I think that was a really memorable mm. show. And then they've had, I mean, they've played with Tool a lot. Tool, Tool. Oh, we're here. <laughs> um, so they, they did all these kind of carvings um, in previous mm. collections of all these um, the sculptural carvings on these dresses. So I, I, there have been memorable um, uh, uh, um, collections, but not accessible in any mm. way. So to come back to, oh, my to last season, which I think, mm. you know, I mean, I spoke to the designers a few months ago in Paris, and the interesting thing was when I brought up that collection was that they were so astonished at that reach. Why do you think the last collection was so kind of groundbreaking and really brought so much attention? That's so bizarre that they were surprised yeah. that yeah. it reached yeah. so many people I because that. I <laughs> assume I thought, I thought it was purposeful. Yeah, no, it was 100% purposeful. But they're like, like these, these are such... like walking memes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I was just thinking but that. You know, exactly. I, I said this to them and I posited this idea. I said, you know, you kind of turned the whole idea of meme fashion yeah. on its head and you took the meme and then made it into clothing. And, and it's going to go response. viral in an Instagram platform. You know, yeah. if, even if you're not aware of the brand, you're yeah. going to see it. And perhaps it's a sort of an, an attempt to, you know, retain their kind of artistic integrity or whatever. But they definitely seemed very surprised <laughs> and definitely were kind of, amu they, had, they felt amused by the way that that had, had been taken. I feel like... No, I don't believe that. Yeah. Yeah, no. That's like... so sceptical. <laughs> I just... I, it, it felt gimmicky. It felt mm. like it was done for that yeah. very reason. Mm. I, I can't see how, you know, if you were in any way in touch or, you know, are on social media, you wouldn't know immediately the, the, the scale that this collection would have online. Yeah, because it didn't even just... It didn't just reach fashion people. Mm. It yes. went beyond that. Like the Mariah Carey memes. Mm. But I do I think that Victor and Rolf, sorry, I do think Victor and Rolf have always sort of had that impact of being quite heavily memed. I mean, the, um, the duvet collection from Autumn Winter 05, like, that was a meme before memes. Dress for the job you want. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But it's so, I mean, it was so interesting that they seemed unaware of even that and the dolls and, you know, Victor and Rolf seems like a brand that is obviously very directed to the internet. They have this incredible internet appeal. Ooh, we're being attacked. They, <laughs> but I wonder if, you know, is that still pertinent? Is that still relevant? To be fair, they have been doing quite meme, meme -y style things before memes kind of existed. The no. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of shapes on shoulders and stuff. That's very memeable. But obviously, they would have been doing that at a time before. Before even realizing. Yeah. So maybe it's believable. Mm. And I think in that, like, a lot of their collections are based around their own values. Like, the no-show was because they were just fed up with the fashion cycle. So maybe this was also a bit of them wearing their kind of values on their fronts mm. um, and kind of taking that to the next level. And in that way, that's a kind of, like, that feels synchronised with their, like, artistic integrity and kind mm. of, like, how they have worked pre-internet as well or pre-kind of social media meme styles. But... Um, yeah, I think that now cultural moments are kind of happening, like, it's so beyond the mm. designer's control mm. what happens, and, mm. it, and kind of cultural conversations happen. They start in one Course. moment, and they kind of, yeah, spread yeah. so fast. It's so interesting that once you've created a garment that is an image, you don't own that image anymore. Mm. I mean, it's interesting talking about how they're always making commentaries on social and political issues but mm. I didn't find the last collection to be very intelligent mm. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. people made out that that was the most political collection they'd done but I just thought like I loved it because mm. it was funny but I don't think it needs to be over intellectualized it's just over analyzed sure. Amna what do you think I think humour is key, and I think humour is something that they've done for a while. Um, we talk about memes, and the whole point, you know, um, what we get from memes is humour. I think they're mm. the kind of, you know, bad dad joke um, that we've got today. It's that version of it. And I think that um, humour is something that doesn't exist in many places in fashion. Now, they don't go Moschino humour, mm. um, but there is always um, that element that carries through um, those collections. And so that's why maybe the last collection um, didn't feel too far off, mm -hmm. um, uh, but it, it, it always felt um, very kind of muted mm. humour. This was kind of like in your face um, and, you know, not off-brand at all. Yeah. Um, but definitely louder 
um, in terms of message. But I think humor has always been there um, in every collection, mm. um, even on a smaller scale. Yeah. It's also like really bridging the gap between those who can buy couture and those who are going to mm. experience it kind of secondhand and want to be part sure. of that conversation. Because this, for me, felt like a very Gen Z D mm -hmm. collection. I mean, mm. it felt very targeted towards a specific audience who are becoming luxury buyers. So I think there's also something in like, of course, yeah. how couture is having to evolve in order to suit the needs of like the generation coming through mm. who are beginning to kind of have wealth that, you know, this is the kind of evolution of what couture is as well, because it's no longer just luxury and the craft and like artisan approach mm. that it was before, even though of course that's still there. I think there was like eight kilometers of tool in yeah, this collection. Um, Who yeah. actually wore it though? Because the only person I saw was Dua Lipa. Well, I saw um, Kim, sorry, Kim Kardashian wore it just now in a shoot for Harper's. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was, yeah. she did. I also couldn't it looked help, weird. I couldn't help but wonder when I saw this collection first come out, if it was, I mean, you know, when this collection happened, uh, the Met Gala dot dot notes on camp yeah. Yeah. were um, w was coming up. Um, was chill overload. <laughs> and so I, I did think, you know, is this a savvy move to, you know, get some garments in an exhibition, get some celebrities dressed in it? What do? We, but then at the same time, there were I think two celebrities. Well, I paid quite close attention. <laughs> so I think there were two celebrities wearing this collection. Um, which was called Fashion Statements on, uh, at the Met Gala, and that was Carolina Kirkova and Hayley Steinfeld. Mm. Thoughts? Camp, I think, I think not a lot of people get it right mm. um, at the Met Gala. In terms of theme, um, they all look amazing, but in terms of theme, I, I don't, there's always a select few that you know, get it you know, completely right, and I don't think Tool is what well, Tool to me does not say camp. No. Mm. It's, they're just, and I think a lot of people did wear that fabric um, at the Met Gala mm -hmm. um, in order to portray um, a camp, the camp theme. And I just, I didn't think they went together at all. Um, one of these dresses could belong um, on there, but not all of them. I wouldn't mm. see camp in this collection. Mm -hmm. That's not my first. It, it really frustrated me how much Tool there was at the Met Gala. Like, it's, it's really very easy. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. It's not an intelligent right, fabric yeah. to design with. Like, there's only a few things you can do with chul. Mm -hmm. It just look, all looks like a Molly Goddard dress, but mm. it is nice. Just not the Met Gala. Jason, what do you think? I think it is sort of camp in the most, like, obvious way, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Do you think that that collection I mean, I think it probably gave a one-sided version of what that word and that kind of very loaded term denotes. Yeah. yeah. Um. I'm just surprised we didn't see it more. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you look at, you know, how um, much it was shared online. Mm -hmm. Was it photographed edi editorially at all? Does anybody know? I mean, yeah. was I mean, it... it's had this collection. Yeah. Yeah, this collection has actually had quite a lot of... Um, editorial coverage from uh, Kylie Jenner being photographed in Interview Magazine, a kind of a moment that I thought it, Andy Warhol himself would have kind of loved. It kind um, of feels okay. like the most contemporary yeah. Oh, let, let's see, okay. And then Kim in the dress as yeah. well, the I'm not shy, I just don't like you. Yeah. Or were these more cover stories than editorial? Um, that was well, a cover sure, story. But yeah, you know, no, absolutely. I, I just they kind of become... Yeah, no, abs I, I just, I'm surprised. I feel like mm. we should have seen more mm. of this collection outside of the images we all shared on social media. Yeah, also that dress could kind of be anyone's. I can't see the yeah. meme point of it. Yeah. It's just a massive just, shoulder pad. Yeah. yeah, has it kind Although of... Although I do quite love it, like... <laughs> <laughs> has it filtered <laughs> down into... She looks amazing in it. We're spending a lot of time, I'm conscious, talking about the previous oh. collection, um, where... They've just shown um, their <coughs> Autumn Winter 19 show in Paris, which is really what we should be talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but just to kind of, you know, to, to bridge that gap, what were we, before we look at the show properly, what were we expecting? And George, I guess you were hoping a move away from the tool. <laughs> Stay in the meme world, but definitely yeah. less tool. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm actually quite disappointed at the lack how of memes. banal this <laughs> collection is. Because you, you, you work in meme, am I correct? Yeah, you like, love a meme. I'm yeah. obsessed with memes. I feel like most people are. 
Um, but also Victor and Rolf's work is always, you know, it's camp, it's funny. Mm. Like their house code, I would say, is humour. Mm. Mm. So That's interesting. To make a collection that they said, what was in the press release? So we're looking, go. right, so here we go. Spiritual glamour. So, spiritual glamour. So this season, yeah, the title of the collection was Spiritual Glamour. Um, I love what we're seeing so far. <laughs> love, love, love. Witch, 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 witch. Modern witches, I love them. I love them. Witch, witch, witch. Well, I think in the press release it says something about a cauldron and the artist stirred a yes. pot to make felt die. Yes. There's a, a sort of a rather more um, holistic mood to this collection. Um, they're talking about um, the word glamour originally refers to that of a magic spell. Mm -hmm. They're looking at paganism, um, sort of astrological symbols, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Which, India, you made a point when we were in the bathroom together <laughs> earlier <laughs> about how this is something that um, you know Generation Y and Z are really looking at. Yeah, and it's it's trendy. Yeah, I mean, astrology, horoscopes, that is very timely for the kind of like millennial generation and what they're interested in. So to make some sort of like slightly straightforward jump, I guess, if that was Gen Z the season before, they kind of like are evolving their mm. audience type. But I mean, it, it was kind of natural that they would do something very different. Like they couldn't have continued in, with the same look. There was no way to really top last season. So it's kind of interesting that they have like taken it back to an extent, but kept quite like again social media friendly sort of references and signatures and it feels very current and definitely something that like you could see cropping up in quite a straightforward way in a high street collaboration like mm -hmm. there's a very easy narrative from um from the catwalk here to the high street which mm -hmm. is not the case with all couture stuff mm -hmm. like at all um so in that i kind of found it very mm -hmm. interesting it's a really good point and also something to note um is that the, l the last collection not going back there but the last collection did actually spawn a kind of um I don't know if it's a capsule, but it's, a, it's um, you know, you were saying, I'm not, you're like, well, I don't know where people would find Victor and Rolf now in, sure. in stores. And, you know, um, Browns are stocking this collection that is um, Victor and Rolf tool, specifically mm -hmm. <laughs> tool. So it's the tool pieces, but uh, much more pared down. So, you know, tops and, and skirts and jackets, but with the same kind of ideas, but... Um, Jules really having a moment. Oh yeah, <laughs> but I wonder if that's the same. If you know, there's the same like Indy, like you were saying, there's the same kind of motivation for this collection to create, you know, a couture show that is a showpiece, and then be able to create easier to access garments after that. I hope so. Mm. Because you can see all of these um, looks, as, mm. as, well, especially the the first few, mm. um, pared down. And you would still very much, um, uh, what's it called? You, you still very much want to be part of that story. Mm. I mean, this is a fantastic story. So something more accessible, I feel like that would sell really well. Mm. Um, I don't see why not. Um, the brand's DNA is still very much a part of this collection. Um, so it's not veering off into, you know. Um, Unknown territory. Yeah, absolutely. Um, whereas I, again, I feel like with the last one, um, it felt, um, other than the humour, um, very separate from what I've um, come to know as their like wonderful bridge between the arts and and fashion. Mm. Um, and this feels like a return to it. You know, the, all the patchwork here, the different mm -hmm. materials, because aren't they known for that? I'm, I'm not crafting. sure. Yeah. So this is also a collaboration with um, a Dutch artist slash alchemist, uh -huh. um, Claudie Jongstra. Claudie Jongstra. Why not? Yeah. So I think you're right. I think there is this return to, um, and something that Victor and Rolf have done sort of seamlessly over the years is to... And well. Yeah, and is to challenge that dichotomy between art and fashion and mm -hmm. question what that is. And I wonder if after the surprising, for them perhaps, hype of last season, they want to return back. Uh, I kind of feel like that's maybe intentional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was saying with the past... Um, season hat did feel a lot more contemporary, mm. a bit more accessible, mm. almost a bit more wearable. Mm. So I feel like after seeing the last one and then seeing what I'm seeing now, it does kind of feel like they're reverting back to an earlier vibe in a way. Mm. It's almost like they kind of grabbed your attention with that last collection and then kind of went back to what they're not so much comfortable with, but maybe known for. Do you mean sort of expecting to take that audience with them? Yeah. I think once you've kind of grabbed them in, mm. then you pull them back 
a bit. Mm. It's interesting as well that Indy, you know, you're mentioning sort of the younger customer mm. and, you know, the, the age of a couture buyer is now much, much younger. People are, mm-hmm. you know, starting to buy these, these clothes at a much oh. younger age. Um, but still, you know, couture has a clientele of like 4,000 people. It's a very small number of people who can actually do that. So I wonder with this collection whether Victor and Rolf aren't simply carving out a smaller segment of already a small basis. I think Victor and Rolf are quite good at not just focusing on making money from perfume, though. Mm. I think it's interesting that they do bridal. Mm. I'd like to see more fashion designers do a bit of bridal. Mm. It's like a good way to make money off very expensive pieces. And totally one of a kind pieces that yeah, are supposed not to not lose integrity. Mm. People spend a lot of money on a wedding mm. dress. Mm. But I wonder, I mean, you know, thinking about the way that we consume fashion and consume collections, would, you know, would we, as people who are interested in the industry, go to a bridal week? Yeah. Would oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> love bridal week. <laughs> but Get to try it on after. <laughs> <laughs> So if Victor and Rolf did, if you were invited to the Victor and Rolf bridal wear show, how would you feel about that? Really excited. Go. You go? Sure, because you know you're going to get a show. Mm-hmm. There's yes. something kind of like tacky but fabulous yeah. about bridal wear. Like, it would be fun, but I'm not sure you would go for the same level of like craft as you would, even yeah. though bridal wear dresses yeah. are like way more expensive. I just feel like bridal wear somehow has a weird rep. Yeah, totally. Um, Almost because it insists on still being white too. Yeah, mm. that's boring, and also and also really so antiquated and dated, and kind of you know so reeking of certain symbolism of you sure know, that's very archaic. archaic. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. exactly. Um, but anyway, bringing us back to to this collection, actually thinking about kind of codes of fashion that are somewhat archa- archaic. You know, to to do a show that's so based on you know, paganism and, and ritual and to show in, in Couture Week where we've seen a lot of different houses do things that are a bit more kind of wild and, and fun. Does this feel like it kind of fits into the schedule? I think it's weird because back in, did my research, but back in 98, um, oh, yes. Andre Leon Talley <laughs> described Victor and Rolf as the Viagra of Couture Week, but mm. it doesn't feel like the Viagra of Couture Week. It feels like everybody else maybe is up their game mm. and got a bit crazy. In response, perhaps, to... Yeah, over the years. Yes, I'm not sure that I would describe this collection as Viagric. No. Pardon my <laughs> creation. I mean, you want a little bit of theatrics with Couture, mm. don't you? You want a show um, as such. And they've given you that in the past. Um, you know, they've mm. taken part, mm. um, they've brought musicians in, um, th- there's always been an element of, um, of theatre. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know... we can't see that here. Sure, sure. But we don't know how that happened, and Instagram is being fiddly. And oh, playing. Right. So we can't, we can't really tell, you know, I mean, I'm sure we could, we could but what but I'm especially saying... Especially with a collection like this, it could very well, there's, there would be a story there that you could really have fun with, I think. And that um, really, really brings me to something I wanted to ask the gang about, which is about how you look at couture, how you see that. Because personally, you know, I, I, I watch couture shows through the people who are there and through their mm-hmm. phone screens, so you can see that. And I think seeing a show, a Victor and Rolf show, being able to see that in that way, it really changes the effect that it's having to seeing this on a flat screen. How do you think that you'd kind of react with that differently or in a similar manner? I'd be apt to be invited to Couture Week, so... You wait. (laughs) (laughs) As in, if you saw it live, how would that change your experience of it? I think, yeah, Couture is definitely a moment for brands to kind of demonstrate the whole, there is obviously a show, so of course, like it demands in a way to be um, like witnessed live, mm. I think. Um, but I guess all fashion shows do by nature of the fact that they are inherently kind of theatrical, um, like the Dior menswear show or something. You know, I think it would be more enjoyable to be there than to see it on Instagram, even though it was very like Instagrammable. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess they kind of want to whip you up in the spirit of, yeah. of what they're doing. Well, I think I'm interested in, because there was, you know, the accusation to the designers last season that that collection was, you know, a a show designed for Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that you can 
say the same about this collection? Mm. What do you think? Yeah, I'd agree with that. Mm. Um, this one feels, like I was saying about um, how the last one felt a bit younger, this one does feel more mature mm. once again. So, yeah, definitely not as, you know, memeable or mm -hmm. circulated as heavily on Instagram. But I think there's still some strong pieces that what, stick out What there. really catches your eye? Um, I think I liked the very first row or maybe the second row. Amna, you were keen on that too. Yeah, and the also, first two, the first yeah. six looks. And also you can incredible. really see the, the references mm. in these ones. Um, yeah, I, I kind of got like this, I mean, definitely you get the witchy vibe and it almost feels kind of like this dark fairy tale. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that sort of vibe is something that people are always into. I want to know those women. I want them yeah. to pull a fucking spell on me. Like, yeah. I, I want to hear like the music that was that played. Or, I don't know. I want to get the whole experience. <laughs> Because I kind of like the backdrop as well. It feels very mm -hmm. like, movie set. I think a big point in the press release was that they were talking about sustainability, mm -hmm. um, which is something they touched on a few seasons ago when they reworked old dresses mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. 40s. Evening gowns, right? Yeah. yeah. But? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, you can still see elements of that um, uh, of that in. Yeah, in well, it's these all about too. all about the felt, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But is felt a couture fabric? Well, that's kind of what they're known for. They're known for using very mm -hmm. non-couture mm -hmm. materials. Yeah, the so fact it's... that they did like rework collections like that is mm. kind of crazy for couture, and like um, I, the emphasis on sustainability is. Again, it's kind of just redefining what luxury is. I mean, it doesn't always have to sure. be new. Like, you can use man-made synthetic fabrics, you can use fabrics that have existed as something else, and mm -hmm. it's not really just about the, what, ha like, what it's made from. It's about this overall kind of effect, and, and that's why I think the show is so important as a part of it, because mm -hmm. it's, like, it's creating a story, it's creating a myth, and, and the fabrics are just one part of, of what's going into that kind of like, brand identity. Mm -hmm. um, but I do wonder if I think about, you know, the shows that have happened over the last few days in Couture. You know, um, John showing at Margiela this morning, um, Gian Battista Valley choosing to show in a presentation format, um, Claire White Keller showing another kind of, another show at Givenchy that people have been raving about. Last season, it felt to me very obvious where Victor and Rolf sat mm -hmm. in that schedule. I wonder what we think about where this collection sits. I feel the last collection definitely stood out a lot more. Mm. Um, just for all the reasons we've been talking about. Exactly, yeah. Gave us so much. Um, this one, I, I guess in a way, feels like it sits more on a couture schedule. Mm. But, I don't know. It's yeah. funny, when I, look at my, when I look at my notes and I think about, you know, there are often Victor and Rolf shows that you pull out, that you have as references you have to mind. And we've mentioned quite a few of them, you know, the paintings collection, duvets, the doll faces, and last season. It's, I wonder if that's just the way that they, they work, that sometimes they hit a moment that people really look for and really, you know, respond to. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this collection is it. They also, I read an interview that they kind of like cultivate mystery. And, mm. and so I think, there is this kind of unpredictability to mm, what yeah, they're going to do. So they kind of throw a curveball in there. Maybe not everyone gets this, but maybe a few do. And it's sort of like, mm. you'll never, you know, you. Yeah, you know, yeah, you don't know what to expect, at least yeah. from them, which is kind of exciting in its own way. And Amma, I think you're right about, you know, if there, there was a customer and there is a woman who is wearing this and wants to wear it and... I don't know. I don't know about customer. I wouldn't know, but I think that there is a definite woman mm. um, that you consistently see, and um, it, it's it, uh, not to repeat myself, but again, the, the bridge between um, the fine arts mm -hmm. and um, and fashion, and you can see exactly um, who she is. Mm. Um, but I don't know about customer. I don't think I've ever known a Victor and Rolf customer, me personally. Yeah. Um, even when they were showing uh, ready to wear. And with um, couture, you think about people who can afford it and won't they be going for the obvious mm. and the older couture houses. Mm. Um, so, but you know, they do so well with their perfume that yeah. maybe it's okay that they just can experiment and make beautiful work. And 
you know, I just wish that we could see some of it um, in real life. That's, I think, mm. the only thing mm. that I feel like is is lacking yeah. from all of this, or a version of it. Somehow, I, I just, you know, this is where it feels like there is no accessibility. Mm. They have um, said many times that they much prefer seeing their clothes in exhibitions mm -hmm. than they do in any other format. Sure. And I wonder that if that's sense. sort of more what this is for, what they're designing for, to show in, you know, the Met, the V&A, to show in somewhere where regular people can see the craft. Because mm -hmm. that's what I really want to see, because you can see it there, and you've, mm. I've seen it in their previous collections. Mm. Um, have they ever had an exhibition here? I don't think in the UK. I think they had a Netherlands, Netherlands. Sydney. Antwerp. I think. Fact check me someone. But I think that's I think that's true. I feel like a lot of their clothes do belong in an exhibition, but mm. not this collection. Mm. But I also feel like not even um, some looks? There like, are some very beautiful looks in it, like the that the patchwork skirts and stuff. I'm obsessed with that. They, they, yeah, they remind me of that um, book about a fish that you read as a it child. Reminded me of the, elephant. the rainbow fish. Yes, the yes. Rainbow it's a lovely book. <laughs> I love that one. I don't know this book. <laughs> it's very charming. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted um, you with the rainbow fish. How you were saying about how the, the age group of people buying couture has gone down, mm. <clears throat> we're taking that into account. I could then maybe believe that sure. this would sell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like you said, I, I'm not really aware of the, the customer, yeah. per se. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you, you know, what they did for a living. I couldn't tell you what, you know, Age group, I, I just, I, I don't know anything about their customer yeah. base. How you're saying all. that they like to see their work in mm. galleries and exhibitions, mm. that also kind of makes sense because mm. it feels right. quite, it feels quite costume, mm. especially with the references and what we read in the statement, it all kind of does complement each other well. Mm -hmm. At the Dior show, um, there was a slogan t-shirt, you know, taken from a, book that asked are clothes modern and I think this has kind of been what people are talking about within this couture season so I want to just put that to our panel but reframe it in in the context of of this collection and ask you a, a, a dual question is couture modern is what we're seeing at couture modern and is this collection modern who wants to go first India um, yeah, I mean, I think, I don't think couture is modern, but mm. I'm not sure it's meant to be. I think that's the mm. whole kind of like point of it is that it's actually rooting down in like the original premise of what mm -hmm. fashion mm. was before fashion mm. became something that was just like mad and uncontained somehow. It was like very delicate in the craft. I was reading some, uh, or listening to a podcast about the detail in couture is stuff that you don't see unless you're wearing it. I mean, it's like that. Mm. It's literally for the wearer, so in that way I think, but having said that, actually, that kind of detail, that kind of like independent personalised thing is very like what people are sort of looking for now, so in a way it's kind of come full circle in that people don't really want mass-produced, looks the same as everyone else, people want something that is theirs and they might mm. take a piece that they find and make it and they're buying second hand and stuff, so in that way actually the craftsmanship of couture is quite like relevant to today, it's not mm. modern, but it's just mm. like it's fitting and is this collection modern no it feels really retro like the aesthetic <laughs> and the look is yeah. very like 70s i mean they kind of like those scarves look very like poochie-esque and and the colors and this and like even the fabrics it all feels very of a different mm. time um that's very yeah i think it's very beautiful and i was going to ask you obviously at canvas that you're looking at lots of things that, about trends i was going to ask you at some point if you think that what happens on couture catwalks mm. influence trends but I wonder if you're seeing here an opposite effect where you know vintage and retro aesthetics are affecting designers who are designing couture I think in general there just has to be this like rethinking of what luxury is kind of like the and the craft so I'm not sure if like couture influences like how people behave mm. in, in their approach to, to fashion but I do think that how people are approaching fashion now and the kind of expectations of sustainability and, and like, yeah, like slower fashion mm. um, will invariably shift what the high street is doing, but I'm not mm. sure it will affect what couture is doing because couture has always been doing the thing that everyone's now meant to be championing and it's slow and it's about like the making process. Amla, you're nodding vehemently. <laughs> Am I? You were, yeah. 
I, I, I agree with everything she's saying. Mm. I, I don't really feel I, the oh, I, the only thing that I, I, I disagree with is that I, I don't find couture very relevant mm -hmm. um, at all. I, I love to look at it, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's um, incredibly exclusionary and mm -hmm. I get that that's the point, mm -hmm. um, but it's not, um, it's not a place in fashion that I feel like, I feel like there are a lot of interesting designers um, that are actually sending um, incredible political messages out with their designs today. And I think that they're really, um, uh, what's it called, bridging the gap between um, social politics or politics in general. And to say anything that, you know, that Couture is trying to talk about politics, it just doesn't, it doesn't, you know. Doesn't mesh for you. Uh -uh, at all. Um, I appreciate it, but if you're gonna do it, you know, give us a show. I mean, I, I, you look at old Dior and you look at Galliano, um, uh, the Egyptian one always mm. springs to mind because it's one of my favorite ones. He took a hot air balloon over Egypt mm. and that inspired the entire collection. And I get that there was more money, so that definitely more budget for the mm. theatrics, but I just feel like, meh, who's it for? Who cares almost about Couture You're talking in general? specifically about Couture Week or Yes, 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 Couture show. Week, not Victor and Rolf right. um, particularly, but mm. just about Couture Week in general. Mm. Feels dated and uh, that's my kind of... No invite for you then. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> never will be. It's fine, babe, I'm okay with that. Um, George, I wonder, will you make a meme of any of these? I've been desperately looking for a meme in all this, but it just, maybe the rainbow fish. Maybe an astrology also, meme? Also, the butterfly dress is very Mariah Carey, I think. That's a meme that's been going around already. The Mariah Carey. The Mariah Carey butterfly. Yeah, so maybe that's a moment. Mm. <laughs> Or like when you forget to take your embroidery ring yeah. out of the... <laughs> you know. So then my final question to my, to my panel before we melt um, into uh -huh. oblivion would be then I suppose, is this collection successful? Has it been successful? I think yes, personally. Jason? Personally, I'm not as taken with it mm. as the last one. So I would say I'm maybe slightly disappointed, oh. but... There is a lot from it that I do really like. Mm. And I do enjoy seeing the theme throughout. And I like how that kind of like shifts from each section. Mm. Mm. You know, it's kind of like there is a story a being told. Yeah, for sure. And kind of going back to what you we were saying, how um, about does it feel modern? Mm. And I'm kind of, I feel like maybe it doesn't have to be, you know, it's mm -hmm. there kind of for pure entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I also think there's, I might be wrong, but I think there's something about Victor Rolf saying that they enjoy making their clothes for that reason. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think that's definitely the purpose, and if so, I think, yeah. I think they have made a success of that. Shall we um, give them a round of applause for everything they've given us and for finally giving us a show studio panel on Victor and Rolf? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Let's...